Why do so many English folk think they don't have a culture of their own? Today we'll be looking at this and exploring just how wrong they are. Hi, I'm Jabba and this is my soapbox. Perhaps we should start by defining what culture actually is. It's the ideas, customs and social behaviour of a particular society. Every nation has a culture, even if it's not immediately apparent. Obviously, the English are no different. So, just why do so many English think they have no culture of value? Perhaps surprisingly, many regressives do not recognise that an English culture actually exists at all. For others, they think of their culture as something belonging to the past. At best, they might mention the royal family and afternoon tea. Indeed, many today couldn't actually tell you what English culture is because they don't appreciate that it actually surrounds them on a daily basis. They are living English culture, but it isn't recognised because culture is seen as something exotic and different, a novelty, and not something they experience every single day without even needing to think about it. Even when travelling abroad, you see, there are many places where English culture is pervasive due to its imposition by the British Empire. This being built upon by subsequent American corporate expansionism, it has come to define what normal is in modern times. But normal just can't be proper culture, can it? Here's something that really happened to me when I moved to London from Scotland. I was down the pub with around a dozen English colleagues engaging in some friendly banter. They were asking me things like, you know, the usual stuff, um, like, where's my haggis? You know, they're, you know, they're surprised not to see me in a kilt. You know, lifting up my shirt and saying, no, no bagpipes under your arm then. <laughs> you know, the, you know, the usual drunken nonsense. And so, and so I just like replied to them, you know, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so what have you got to show for yourselves? Morris dancing and cricket. And I'm like, bloody Morris dancing. You know, so I'm expecting some sort of comeback off them. Uh, you know, at least from a couple of them. Um, but you know what they did? Every single one of them. They all dropped their heads and looked at the table. There, there we were, right? We're sitting in a traditional English pub, drinking traditional English ale. And on the menu was traditional English cuisine, if we wanted it. And all of us are sitting there speaking in English. Right, so this is a place, we're sitting in a place that's oozing English culture from every inch and they couldn't see past their embarrassment of Morris dancing. So I was like, what, so that's it? No witty comebacks? They just mumbled into their glasses of beer. You know, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm like, well, don't you understand why you can't see English culture anywhere? It's because it's everywhere. It's because you won. You went conquering and you won. That's nothing to be ashamed about. You know, it's like Scots, Irish and Welsh culture continued as a statement of defiance of the English. But England was so dominant that what we think of as life, as normal life, that is English culture. Do you let the culture of conquered peoples continue if it stopped rebellion? But make no mistake, Anglification of half the globe has made it normal to everyone. And of course, I, I just, I just like mumbled responses. You, you know, like I suppose you're right about that, and never really thought about it well, that way. Uh, you know, it's like, don't get me wrong. The conversation soon moved on to some other mundane thing. But, 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 but you, you get the idea. You know, it's, it's um. Uh, people surrounded by by their culture and they can't see it can't see the wood for the trees and I've actually found this to be typical of many English people uh, the British Empire was more or less the English Empire with the Scots, Irish and Welsh regiments uh, effectively being the first colonial regiments of that empire you didn't have Celtic traditions spread across the globe it was English traditions so yes it may have been the British Empire but it was English culture that it promulgated. So just because we live something every single day of our lives, that doesn't suddenly stop it from being culture. Remember, culture is the ideas, customs and social behaviour of a particular society. On this basis, 
it's a complete lie that Britain needs immigration in order to have a vibrant culture. Because it's not something that you only experience when you go to an exotic restaurant or attend an ethnic carnival. Your culture is all around you. All you need to do is open your eyes. Of course, it's all well and good that I'm saying what I've said, but in order to fully appreciate the point, let's take a look at some English culture and see what it has to offer. Well, the most obvious starting point um, is the language. You know, it's like I'm um, talking to you uh, in English. Um, you, know, you know, English culture, obviously, is, is rooted in the development of the English language. Um, many languages form the basis for English, uh, ranging from uh, German, Anglo-Saxon, French, you know, there's several Celtic languages, uh, Latin, and there's the Norse languages of the Vikings. Over time, as England became unified, Middle English established as a common language by the medieval high period. Uh, the catalyst for this was uh, that more workers began to travel up and down the country, that was as a result of um, a shortage of workers caused by the Black Death. That would have been around the mid-14th century. And this evolved into the modern English language we take for granted today that effectively became the international language of business, courtesy of the British Empire and then the subsequent Anglo-American globalisation. Uh, next, um, we have English law. Um, Again, something that we take for granted, that we don't think of as being something special. Uh, and yet, uh, from the basis of habeas corpus in the Magna Carta to common law and trial by jury, the English legal system has been spread across the globe, again, a courtesy of the British Empire, and it formed the backbone of what we consider justice in Western civilization. Now, the arts, um, well, as with most inhabited locations, art predates civilization. You know, and England is no different. Um, there's a rich tradition of artists throughout recorded history. Even with the advent of American culture, the English still managed to take it and put a very English spin on it, shall we say. Uh, cuisine, not often a word that people would actually automatically think of um, when thinking of Eng English culture, I must admit. But, um, historically, uh, dishes would be, like, localised based on local produce. And so these would consist of, like, cheeses, pork pies, pasties, fried foods such as fish and chips or a full English breakfast, hot pots, bangers and mash, spotted dick, and the good old Sunday roast. All, tr all, tr all traditional uh, English foods. Um... Now, folklore, um, again, there is an English tradition. Uh, this does actually marry in with uh, a lot of European tradition as well. Um, but then there was the great rivalry of uh, England and France. Uh, I'll, I'll not actually go into that right now. Um, you know, you'll perhaps look at that in a future video. But um, traditional English folklore, it includes tales of goblins, ogres, Giants, dragons, trolls, dwarves, pixies, gnomes, and fairies. You know, and then it goes right through to King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, the Sword and the Stone, Courtly Love, and Robin Hood. And that sort of brings us on to literature, because folklore sort of gave way to popular literature with the writings of like Chaucer. But the biggest turning point into the birth of like, modern English was uh, Shakespeare, which is still uh, a staple uh, of what, what is taught in, in schools today. English literature could be said to begin with the Anglo-Saxons, because anything before that, cannot re you, know, you can't really call it English. Uh, but there has been a wealth of classic literature, uh, mainly from priests and clergy during the medieval uh, period, uh, but of course there was the explosion of writers from the Renaissance onwards. Okay, now I'll bunch the I'll bunch this together a little bit. 
Um, because there's a whole bunch of stuff, philosophy and religion, you know, science and industry, and sport. Um, now, as you can see from this list, uh, that, um, you know, well, it's, this, this is like the, you know, the, the wiki page entry. But there's so much stuff, it would simply take too long to try to cram it all into this video. But um, the list goes on and on, and each of these categories it, it, are full of entries themselves. You know, you know, it's, it, it would take all day just to go through them, but uh, you, you know, but please, it's like in, in your own time, look, look them up. Um, it's it's an incredibly impressive list. But I'll, but I'll just summarise a couple of points, um, because whether we like it or not, um, religion formed the backbone of the development of Western civilization, including English culture. <sighs> Indeed, uh, Henry VIII's split from Rome forever changed the course of history. Civil war and sectarianism ripped Britain apart, and that joined us a wider European divide as the Reformation turned violent. You know, and that was like shaping the face of empire right down to the Irish Troubles of the 20th century that are still unresolved to this day. If we turn to sport, um, well. Leisure activities are integral to any culture, and surprise, surprise, England is no different. Um, but uh, we find the universality of many of the English sports, they, they perhaps hide the, their actual English origins. You know, it's like there's, well, lawn bowls, tennis, football, rugby, cricket, hockey, snooker. You know, that's, that's some of the significant ones. Um, philosophy and science. With some of the oldest universities in Christendom, uh, England established a fine tradition of producing some of the finest minds of the medieval, renaissance and enlightenment periods. And so this gave us the foundations for the modern scientific method. This developed into the Royal Society, which in no small way would have contributed to the Industrial Revolution. So yeah, the Industrial Revolution, I think, I think it's worth uh, um, a mention in its own right, <laughs> considering its significance. Um, but the Industrial Revolution, um, every single country and culture on the face of the planet today ha has benefited in some way or another from British vision and imagination. You know, that said, this is more of a British revolution rather than an exclusively English one. But the British Empire dragged mankind into the modern age with mass production, rapid transit and communication. The world would never be the same again. And yes, some of what I've just mentioned uh, was also made possible by the exploitation of other peoples and countries. But I'll specifically cover the pros and cons of the British Empire in another video. Okay, so do you see what I mean? Anybody who thinks Eng the English don't have a culture of their own needs a head examined. So, the next time you come across someone whining about there being no proper English culture, throw some of this in their face or point them towards this video. Anyways, I'm Jabba, and this has been my soapbox, and thanks for watching. Catch you next time.